بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه All the praise and all the glory is due to Allah and I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family his companions and those who followed his path up to the day of judgment. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to a new episode of explaining the ahadith or the prophetic traditions on the well known book of Umdat al Ahkam. And Umdat al Ahkam or the reliance of uh, legal rulings is a book of hadith which includes the basic uh, prophetic ahadith mainly on uh, the legal rulings uh, classified and organized uh, according to the chapters of Islamic jurisprudence or Islamic law. So it starts with purification and goes uh, through prayers, fasting, and all the other chapters of fiqh. Today's hadith, inshallah, we are talking about uh, the hadith and it is a continuation of the specified times for prayer, mawaqeet as-salah. And we explained a couple of hadith before talking about the specified and prescribed times for prayers. Today's hadith is talking about a story which happened to the Prophet وسلم, regarding the prayer of Asr and the legal ruling of missed prayers. Uh, let us inshallah read the hadith in Arabic and its translation in English. And this is hadith number 49 of Umdat al-Ahkam. The hadith reads as follows, عن علي رضي الله عنه قال أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يوم الخندق ملأ الله قبورهم وبيوتهم نارا كما شغلونا عن الصلاة الوسطى حتى غابت الشمس وفي لفظ لمسلم شغلونا عن الصلاة الوسطى صلاة العصر ثم صلاها بين المغرب والعشاء On the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib May Allah be pleased with him who said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Let Allah fill their houses and graves with fire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refers to the infidels or to the unbelievers who combated or who fought with him and his companions in the battle of Al-Khandaq, the trench. He said, let Allah fill their houses and graves with fire, just as they have prevented us from offering the middle prayer, uh, Al-Asr prayer, until the sun had set. According to another version of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, they have prevented us from offering the middle prayer or the Asr prayer in its fixed time. Then the messenger offered it between Maghrib and Isha prayers. From this hadith, we have some legal rulings. On the top of them is that the messenger وسلم, said that the middle prayer is the Asr. And this is, uh, there is an emphasis in the Quran about the middle prayer, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, حَافِظُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى Keep uh, preser preserving or keep offering the whole prayers and especially the Asr prayer or the middle prayer. And the scholars actually differed about the definition of the middle prayer. And some of them said that it is the Fajr prayer and others said that it is Asr or Zuhr or Maghrib or even Isha. But the correct view according to this hadith is that the middle prayer is Al-Asr. And it has a merit. And the Messenger وسلم, gave us a severe warning against people who neglect offering the Asr prayer on time. According to the authentic hadith, 
the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man fatathu salatu al-asri faqad watira malahu wa ahla whoever misses the asri prayer in its due time it is as if he has missed the whole of his property and all of his family it means that the asri prayer is so important and that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an extra emphasis on the Quran of offering it so, or the scholars explain that hadith in the sense that it is easier for a person to lose the whole of his property and to lose the whole of his family than to just leave the four uh, raka'ats of the asr prayer and also the Prophet sallallahu talked about that meaning in giving an example of explaining some of the acts of the hypocrites of the munafiqeen which the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and some of them or the hypocrites usually miss the asr prayer until the sun is going to set and then they just make it rashly and quickly just in a blink of an eye performing the four raka'ats without due concentration or even attendance of the mind so the Messenger وسلم, regarded it as one of the prayers by which the hypocrites are known. Because it is a prayer which mostly, most of the people, they take rest. And they, some, some of them, they sleep, they take a nap during that time. So the Messenger وسلم, emphasized the, uh, the performance of Asr prayer in its due time. Also from the hadith under discussion, the Prophet sallallahu They kept us busy with uh, fighting until we missed the Asr and the Maghrib. Or basically the Asr prayer. So the Prophet sallallahu did not perform the Asr prayer. Uh, we know that there is a way of performing prayers which is during fear or during fighting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran, that the ideal way of making prayers during fighting is sometimes that the Imam leads the people in prayer and then they sort themselves into two basic groups. A group following the Imam and another group wait until they keep an eye or, making, uh, or guarding the uh, believers especially if they are facing the enemies. So if even they are not able, and we are going to explain the way of making prayers during fear later, but anyhow, if the believers are not able to make the prayers as described by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, Allah said in the Quran, فَرِجَالًا أَوْ رُكْبَانًا So people may perform the prayers or the believers during fighting, even if they are running and rushing and walking back and forth. But it just they are making takbir and sometimes they make it in congregation, but separately, and everybody is maybe fighting, engaged in uh, fighting with the disbelievers, but in any way which is possible. During this prayer on the battle of the trench, the Messenger وسلم, did not perform the prayers uh, in the way described in the Quran. Why? Because the fear prayer or salatul khawf was not actually enacted or sanctioned during that time. It was sanctioned to the Prophet ﷺ afterwards in Usfan, as it is established through the authentic ahadith of the Messenger ﷺ. So the Messenger ﷺ delayed this prayer on purpose. So the scholars are faced with another problem, which is what is the case if a believer or a Muslim misses one of the obligatory prayers on purpose. Should he perform it or not? There is a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which is reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim in which the Messenger وسلم, said مَن نَسِيَ صَلَاةً أَوْ نَامَ عَنْهَا فَلْيُصَلِّهَا إِذَا ذَكَرَهَا لَا كَفَّارَةَ لَهَا إِلَّا ذَلِكَ Whoever forgets to make the prayer on time or whoever is overwhelmed by sleeping. And afterwards he remembers that prayer that he missed, 
he must make it immediately. But here, according to this occasion, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not miss the prayer because of forgetting it. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not sleep until he missed the prayer. But he made it actually on purpose because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so uh, occupied and busy with fighting. Therefore, the scholars said, whoever, and this is the view of the majority of the Muslim scholars, the Shafi'i, the uh, Hanafiya, the Maliki, and the Shafi'i, all the three school, schools of Islamic law emphasize that if a person misses a prayer on purpose, he must make it whenever he remembers that. Because the Messenger وسلم, missed this prayer, and he made it later even after the prayer of Maghrib. And they extended the rule to all the prayers. Even if a person misses 10 or 15 or even a couple of weeks or a month not making prayers, and then still it is due on him. And they referred to a couple of hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. On the top of them, the hadith in which the Messenger ﷺ said to the woman, the debt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more worthy to be settled. In the sense that if a person has a due debt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the act of acts of worship or prayers or fasting, whatever, it must be made up. And according to the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, prayer is more due and a person cannot replace another in making prayers. So also it is, it is also made obligatory according to another hadith. The hadith of the Messenger وسلم, after finishing Al-Khandaq or the trench battle, the battle of the trench, he commanded his companions not to pray Asr until they reach Banu Quraidha. The Prophet وسلم, said to them, لا يصلين أحدكم والعصر إلا في بني قريضة. Let not any of you pray Asr until he reaches Banu Qurayza. As we know that the scholars or the Sahaba or the companions of the Messenger وسلم, they understood this hadith differently. Some of them understood the meaning of this hadith in the sense that the Messenger وسلم, is pushing them forward to go quickly. So they said that we may actually pray Asr in its due time, and then we will reach Banu Qurayza later. And they performed the Asr prayer on time. The others understood the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, literally. And they understood it to mean that they should not pray the Asr until on the specific place of the people of Banu Qurayza. But they made Asr after Maghrib. So the Prophet وسلم, did not criticize them. And the Messenger وسلم, accepted making up the prayer that they left on purpose based on the command of the Messenger The view of the Hanabila is that if a person doesn't remember how many prayers that he missed or any prayer that he missed on purpose, he may seek Allah's forgiveness and make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then finally he make more nawafil or additional supererogatory prayers that may make up the obligatory prayers and they refer to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which he said that Allah will look up to the supererogatory prayers and if his obligatory prayer are deficient or they ha he has any shortcoming in his prayer it will, me it will be made up by uh, the uh, additional supererogatory uh, prayers that he made. And this is the rule. So the correct view according to the majority of scholars that any person misses a prayer, either out of forgetfulness, out of sleeping, or even out of uh, leaving it or missing it on purpose, he must make it as long as he remembers the numbers of the prayers that he missed. And there is no expiation for that but performing it as described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger.
Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Welcome to another live edition of Hara Tonight. This program provides some of the latest news and information from around the Muslim world and also discussions about topics that are important for Muslim life. Brothers and sisters, the Islamic perspective on divorce, it's an outlet which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal for any relationship that has gone sour or an abusive relationship. But this principle of divorce has its rules and has its procedures. For our first news item for the news segment tonight, uh, we're going to go to the United States, uh, the state of Kansas, the Mus Muslim community there in the United States, the state of Kansas. The city is a Kansas city. Talk is communication. In order to communicate, you have to make sure that exactly you tell or you told the other or the partner the real thing about yourself. Tonight, uh, we're going to talk about, inshallah, uh, Abdullah uh, ibn Abbas. And what I wanted to start off with, you know, we all know that he was very young when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. So let's start from the beginning, from his youth. Time is very important and precious. Many of us and our youth and, and the Muslim Ummah doesn't know the value of time. And even if we think we know, sometimes we, we face difficulty and challenges understanding and managing your schedule on a daily basis. Also, the scholars refer to the dua. The Messenger وسلم, made a dua against the disbelievers. And he said, Mala Allahu quburahum wa butunahum naran. May Allah fill their graves and their stomachs with fire. The scholar said, Is it permissible for the Messenger وسلم, to make invocation or dua prayers against the disbelievers? Yes, it is permissible because the Messenger وسلم, made this dua, especially those who combat, combated or those fought with against the Messenger وسلم, directly and they kept him busy. May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, along with his companions for performing the prescribed prayers on time. This is the reason. If the Messenger وسلم, insults or makes a dua against a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a source of mercy and blessing according to the authentic hadith of the messenger. But if it, if it is turned against the disbelievers, especially if there is an excuse or there is a reason for that. We remember that those people came to get rid of Islam and they wanted actually to drive the messenger وسلم, and his companions away from the Medina. So it was a, high, a highness a crime and a great crime against Islam and Muslims. So that's why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua against them. These are some of the legal rulings derived from this hadith. Hadith number 51, it is on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas. And it reads as follows. An Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma qal, A'tama al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bil-Isha. Fakharaj Umar faqala as-salatu ya Rasulallah. رقد النساء والصبيان فخرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ورأسه يقطر يقول لولا أن أشق على أمتي لأمرتهم لأمرتهم بهذه الصلاة هذه الساعة On the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him that he reported that the messenger of Allah blessings and peace of Allah be upon him said or he delayed the Isha prayer. Umar came out saying, O oh Messenger of Allah, it's high time for the prayer since the women and the children have already lied down. The Prophet performed out, uh, the Prophet وسلم, came out with water dropping from his head and said, Had it not been difficult, for my followers, I won't have ordered them to pray the Isha prayer at that late time. So, first of all, the meaning of this hadith is that the Messenger ﷺ delayed the Isha, as we mentioned. 
And this is the sunnah of the Messenger ﷺ. But when he discovered upon the information received from Umar ibn al-Khattab that the, all the children and the women started lying down, so the Messenger ﷺ made it earlier. So it talks about the prescribed time for the Isha prayer. First of all, who is Abdullah ibn Abbas? Abdullah ibn Abbas is the interpreter of the Quran and the habr of uh, the, his, this ummah. He is one of the most knowledgeable people about the Quran. That's why the scholar said, if Ibn Abbas explains a verse of the Quran and it contradicts with the explanation of other companions or other people, his explanation is given priority. Because the Messenger وسلم, praised his understanding. Uh, it is amazing to tell you that Abdullah ibn Abbas was a young child during the life of the Messenger وسلم, and the Prophet died or passed away when Ibn Abbas was 13 years old. Ibn Abbas had a high status in the eyes of Umar ibn al-Khattab according to the story when he invited him to engage with the people of Badr and the Sahaba complained to Umar ibn al-Khattab and Umar asked him and them about the explanation of the verse so the pro, uh, all the Sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, said the meaning of these verses is it is a reminder of the Prophet وسلم, upon the conquest of Mecca to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his forgiveness. But Abdullah ibn Abbas gave a different interpretation and he said this is a reminder of the death or the closeness of the death of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Abdullah, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab said, this is the reason that I invited Ibn Abbas to engage with you in your sessions. Uh, according to this hadith, we have some legal rulings that may be uh, derived from, first of all, from the saying of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَوْلَا أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam concluded that the ideal time for the Isha prayer is to perform it at the third of the night or to make it at the midst of the night, at the middle of the night. And this is the ideal time. And the Messenger وسلم, performed it during that time. But his custom or his sunnah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, is when he saw the Sahaba gathering for the congregation prayer earlier, he made it earlier. And the time of Isha prayer starts with the disappearance of the red twilight, of the red shafaq or dusk. So, and it ends all the way to the mid of the night. So the Messenger وسلم, made it earlier, but he informed us that the ideal time is the, uh, the ideal time is at the third of the night or the midst of the night. Also from the Prophet وسلم, was afraid of imposing or incurring a difficulty to his nation. So the scholars derived from this statement the following legal maxi, which is difficulty brings easiness, easiness. So whenever there is a difficulty in religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviates the ummah and makes it easy. Therefore, when it became difficult for a person to apply water to his body or water is inaccessible, so the preferred or the view here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a concession. And this concession was to perform tayammum or dry ablution. The same is extended for the prayer. The same is extended also for making siwak. The Messenger وسلم, said, had it not been difficult for my nation, I would have commanded my followers to make siwak for every single act of ablution. But the Messenger وسلم, recognized that there is a difficulty and this is the reason that wavered the legal ruling and made it a concession. Also, it shows uh, that when there is a confusion or there is a conflict between two acts, one of them is preferred and the other is 
not preferred or there is the priority, one, one of the two acts takes the first priority and the other takes the second priority, we may make an act which occupies the second priority if there is a reason for that. That's why the Messenger وسلم, performed in this case the Isha prayer not in its ideal time. Why? Because he found a reason out of fear that the people may miss the prayer. Also it shows the mercy and the compassion of the Messenger وسلم, to his nation. And it is touched actually in the prayer. When the Messenger, uh, basically the Messenger وسلم, said in the authentic hadith to Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Ya Mu'adh, afattanun ant? Are you going to test or to trial the people in their religion? Because he recognized that Mu'adh used to pray uh, the jama'ah or the congregational prayer reciting the whole of Al-Baqarah. So one of the people actually gave up and left the prayer. So the Messenger وسلم, reprimanded him severely and said, are you going to make the people being trialed in their religion? And they would actually find the religion difficult. Such is the case when the Prophet وسلم, used to shorten his prayer upon hearing the voice of a child at the end of the rose. This is the reason the Messenger وسلم, gave an example of his mercy and of his compassion to the Ummah even in advising them and in acts a lot of worship and it is sufficient to say that the Messenger وسلم, in a lot of times used to leave a lot of acts out of fear that it may be imposed, they may be imposed on his Ummah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy upon all of us and to provide us with tranquility. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ooh, 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 ooh.